What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool for adding landscapes and mountains in the backgrounds of your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Mountainscapes is a brand new add-on from the guys over at B Production. Um, you've probably seen some of their other add-ons, things like tree vegetation, um, forestation, um, just a bunch of different add-ons, specifically kind of asset collections, as well as some other things like uh, Cloudscapes and their population crowd simulation tool. Um, but Mountainscapes is a new tool for basically adding mountains and backgrounds to your scenes. Now, this one is a little bit interesting in the sense that it's not really an add-on as much much as kind of an asset collection. So basically it's a collection of a bunch of different assets specifically designed to allow you to add mountains and rocks and cliffs and things like that. Note there's nothing like a procedural or anything like that. These are literally scanned add-ons that you bring into your scenes. Um, so, which is fine because a lot of the time you just want something that looks, uh, looks somewhat realistic that you can bring in and work with quickly. And so note that this is basically a collection of assets that came from, I think this is the Google Maps API, I'm not really sure, but they've been kind of optimized for use in Blender. Um, and again, it's a pretty large collection of these uh, models. And so if you do wanna check this out, I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I do receive a commission. Um, I also did get a copy of this from the guys over at B Production to try out. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. So basically what this is, and I've just uh, basically added a quick environment using physical starlight and atmosphere just so we can kind of see what these are going to look like. But basically this is a collection of assets that you can bring directly into Blender. And so um, in order to add these, all you do is you just extract the file that you get. Um, and then you need to go into your file paths and you need to add that folder in your asset libraries in here. So just find this, put this in here. I would go ahead and set this to append rather than append reuse data. Um, and then you can access this inside of your asset browser. Now within your asset browser, um, notice that you're going to see a number of different kinds of models. And notice how it's uh, split up in here by different types, right? So you've got like your green models, you've got your Monument Valley models, you've got your Mount Rushmore models. Um, all the models are kind of organized based on the types of models, right? So if you want snow, um, all of those are in here like this. Note that some of these are in here with HD models as well, which we'll take a look at those in a second. Um, but if I click on the all button right here, you can just see all of those in a list. And so one of the things you're gonna notice is when you bring these in, there's two different kinds of models. So there's the regular models and there's the HD models. And so when you drag these in, they're going to look a little bit different. So I'm gonna drag this one in right here like this. And so these are gonna be the same model but with different levels of detail, right? So there's the standard model which if we jump over into shaded mode, you can kind of see this one is going to have lower levels of geometric detail in here, right? Um, and basically it's going to add additional detail using displacement if you jump over into cycles. While the HD is going to have a much heavier level of detail, so if I tab in edit mode, you can kind of see this right here. Um, the geometric detail is going to be a lot higher than this one right here. Um, and you're not going to need to use micro displacement. So a lot of the time these HD models are going to work better if you're going to render in cycles versus, or if you're going to render in EV versus if you're going to render in cycles. And so if I jump over in material preview mode, you can see how they look fairly similar, but it's very clear that this one has a better level of detail in it than this one. However, if we toggle over into rendered mode right here in EV, these are going to look something like this. But if we jump over into cycles, notice how you're going to see a lot more detail show up in that low poly so that they're going to be very similar at that point. So really two different ways that you can do this, um, depending on your computer speed, other limitations like that. But in general, I would recommend the HD models for EV and the low poly for cycles because they can use that displacement. And so let's pick a couple of these Mount Rushmore models and bring them in just so you can kind of take a look at this. Cause I want you to understand the level of detail that's in here. And so just due to the nature of these assets and kind of the size that they're supposed to display, you do 
kind of need to understand the way that these are going to work. These are designed to be placed in the background of your models. And if you get in really close, you're not going to get a very good result, right? If I zoom in here, right here, you can obviously see that these have been scanned. Um, and so it's not like ultra high detail. These are not designed to be foreground models. They're designed to be background models. And if you look at some of the example models that have been created in here, you can see how um, these are being utilized. And so these are designed to be in the background. If you kind of look at the concept art for this, you can kind of see that, right? All of these are like further away. They're not close up. This is not designed to be a close up tool. It's designed to be something that adds stuff in the background like this. Now that being said for the cost, I think there's definitely value here, um, but I do want you to be clear on what you're going to be getting. I mean, one of the other things that you're going to see, and so if you zoom in on some of these, you can even kind of see some of the seams in here where the different tiles have been stitched together. Um, it's not something that you really notice if you zoom out a little bit and render this way. So, I mean, obviously these are going to look very good from a distance like this. Um, even if I go over into EV, these are going to look really good. I could definitely do some stuff with the lighting, um, but the closer you get, the more you can see that, yeah, this is definitely scanned data. And so there are a number of different collections of types of backgrounds. So you've got like the snowy mountains, right? Like you've got a, uh, you've got some Himalayas in here. You've got Denali, other things like that. And again, you're just going to want to drop those in here in the background for the ones that aren't marked as HD. You are going to want to make sure that you use cycles so that micro displacement can give you that additional detail. So if you are using something like this, there's, there's a couple limitations that I can see. So the first is going to be trying to get a texture that kind of like maps along with these assets right so finding something that actually kind of aligns in here um, so that that's something that you would have to kind of figure out is how do you match the texture of your ground to the texture of these assets and so the tree models can be a little bit of a limiting factor in here as well just because the closer you get to them the more you can see that these have definitely been scanned um, so that's something to be aware of as well um, I do still think there's a place for this in your workflow especially if you're looking to place things in the background right like that mountain Mountain, for example, I think looks really good when it's rendered out. You just don't want to get ultra close to it. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on. If you think it would be helpful to you at all, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.